What does data migration strategy have to do with you getting promoted as a data professional? Lots, actually. Well, depending on your role and where you're trying to go, of course. By the end of this video, you'll have a pretty solid idea of how to build a data migration strategy for your company and how to get data strategy building experience that's sure to attract the right type of attention from business leaders. We'll talk more about that towards the end of the video, so stick around. For the very best data leadership and business building advice, be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon to be notified when a new episode drops each week. Whether you're new to the data industry or, like me, been at it over a decade, it is vitally important that you are making sure that the work you're doing on a daily basis is actually benefiting your company's bottom line. It's not that hard to conceptually bridge that gap either. How do I know? Well, to date, I've trained over 1 million data professionals on AI, so you could could say I know a thing or two about data science. That and I've been delivering technical strategic plans since 2008 for organizations as big as the US Navy, Saudi Aramco, and National Geographic. Hi, I'm Lillian Pearson and I support data professionals to becoming world-class data leaders and entrepreneurs. Our entire data strategy will be centered around my evergreen data strategy framework called STAR. By applying this framework to your strategy building efforts, you'll be making sure that your strategy is effective despite any changes in market condition, hence the evergreen. Another beauty of the STAR framework is that it is completely vendor agnostic. Actually, it prompts you to go and do research and look at the use cases and technologies out there that would make most effective use of your company's current infrastructure. So this is STAR. It's comprised of the following four phases. One, S, survey the industry. This is where you go around and do a ton of research, looking at all the different use cases and case studies and considering how those might fall into place with your organization's current setup. Next is T, take stock and in inventory of your organization. This is where you will collect or generate all sorts of documentation that describes the state of your organization as it currently is. This documentation could include things like surveys, interviews, and of course, the standard request for information. Now phase three is A, assess your organization's current state. This is where you will identify gaps and risks opportunities, and select an optimal data use case for your company. In phase four of the STAR framework, you're gonna go ahead and make recommendations and develop a strategic plan for reaching future state goals. This is where you'll of course lay out all of your recommendations and requirements in order to implement the use case. Now, like I said, we're actually applying my STAR framework to a data migration strategy building effort. So essentially here, our use case has already been chosen for us. It's data migration. Although we've already been assigned a use case here, we still need to apply the STAR framework so we can make sure that we have all of the project planning in place and that the strategy is feasible for the long-term, say, 18-month future. So let's start looking at how the STAR framework would be applied to a data migration use case. Looking first at S, survey the industry, you'll need to go around and collect a ton of use cases and case studies that document other companies' experience with data migration projects. You do this in order to gather up an idea of actually what is possible and what's most feasible for your company given its current technology setup. In the description below, I am linking to a whole set of data migration case studies that's been published by Foresight Group International. Actually, if you've got a data migration use case that comes to mind, it would be awesome if you would link to it or just even name it and describe it in the comments below. That way, our community can grow and help each other out along the way. Now, so for many of the steps and elements that we'll be plugging inside of the STAR framework, I'm actually leaning heavily on the data migration project checklist. This is a migration checklist that was developed by Experian to help data leaders to utilize their Pandora technology. Nonetheless, it's very good. I'll link to it in the description below if you'd like to check that out too. Now, like I said, I strive for all of my content to be completely vendor agnostic, which of course is a big reason why I recommend you survey the industry and look at use cases and case studies before trying to decide what technologies to use. Now in phase two, you'll need to take stock and in inventory of your organization. Generally, this information gathering phase utilizes surveys, interviews, and requests for information. Now, there are five main categories of information you'll need to collect. Those are specifications, policies, agreements, documentation, and assessment findings. But let's dig a little deeper into the types of details you would need to collect if you were preparing a data migration strategy. Looking first at specifications. You'll need a target mapping specification. This documents the high level objects and relationships that will be linked during the data migration. Now, in terms of policies, you'll need a configuration management policy. This policy will document how data migration project resources will be managed. 
you'll need to have this on hand because it's going to be needed for reference in the execution phase. You'll also want to collect security policies. These document the security restrictions across your organization. Lastly, you'll want to collect any existing data migration policy documentation. In terms of agreements, make sure you collect all third-party agreements, especially as they pertain to vendors and the requirements these vendors are covering. In terms of documentation you'll want to collect, you'll need any relevant training documentation, and of course, the existing data dictionary. Lastly, for assessment findings, if your company already has done a pre-migration assessment, you'll want to get a look at that, so make sure to grab it. If not, you'll have to produce one now. Hey, if you're liking my data strategy framework, you will probably love my video on how to create an evergreen analytics strategy framework. I'll link to it in the description below so you can check it out. Moving into phase three, assessing your company's current state. This is where you'll need to assess your company as it currently is in order to uncover any gaps, risks, or opportunities as they may exist for your company today. Again, this is generally where you'd be uncovering opportunities and selecting your data use case. But here, of course, our use case has been prescribed to us as a data migration. Now, the broad categories of information and assessments you'd need to do when you're preparing a data migration strategy include gaps, risks, opportunities, privileges and securities, processes, project management, and engineering. You'll want to make sure that you're thoroughly assessing each of these elements. And so for gaps, risks, and opportunities analysis, you'll need to produce a preliminary structured task workflow. This will help you identify gaps in budget and skill sets. You'll also want to be sure to assess and identify any gaps in knowledge or on-hand training resources. You'll want to evaluate the data skill sets, tools and resources and look for any gaps, opportunities and risks within those. Moving on to privileges and security. You'll need to assess what types of security issues are likely to arise during your data migration project. You'll also want to look at your access rights and make sure you have everything you need. If not, you'll need to put requests into place. In terms of processes, you'll need to create a data quality management process. Here, you'll need to decide what type of processes you need to put in place in order to preserve your data quality rules as you work in the data migration project. You'll also need a risk management process. You'll have to decide what measures you put into place in order to reduce and resolve risks as they occur. In terms of project management, you'll need to produce project estimates. You'll need to assess how long you have and how long you estimate the data migration project will take to complete. You'll need to do a target mapping assessment and produce a retirement strategy. What I mean by that is that you need to have a plan in place for how you will educate users about where to retrieve their data, how they can access the data once the old system is decommissioned. You will of course need to assess relevant stakeholders and any issues that could arise among them. Ultimately, you want to produce conceptual as well as logical models. These communicate and define the structure of the legacy system and target environments. You'll definitely want to make sure that these models are logical and easy to understand because they really serve as fundamental communication tools between all team members and stakeholders. Lastly, looking at engineering, you'll have to take a look at hardware and software. You'll need to assess and evaluate how you can make optimal use of your company's existing data technologies, skill sets, and data resources. Moving into phase four, this is where you're going to recommend a strategic plan for reaching your company's future state goals. Now, this is where you're actually going to be producing a lot of the deliverables for your data strategy plan. Those are baseline recommendations, strategic assets, structures and workflows, specifications, policies, and agreements. Getting deeper into the specifics though, in terms of baseline recommendations, you'll want to make sure that you're including requirements for production software and hardware. You'll need to detail the project estimates in terms of time and budget, as well as milestone goals. You'll also need to detail key project resources. So this comes down to people, tools, and data access. In terms of strategic assets, you'll want to include a proposed update to the data dictionary, as well as standard project document templates. These are things like a risk register, an issue register, acceptance criteria, project controls, project progress reports, change management reports, and more. You'll want to include a detailed stakeholder communication plan, as well as training plans. These training plans will help to ensure that all of the relevant team members are properly trained before being asked to perform the work. You will of course need to include a data migration execution strategy and a retirement strategy. In terms of structures and workflows, you'll want to include a project delivery structure. This will probably be something like a waterfall approach where you go through the process of analyze, design, build, 
test, and launch. Lastly, you'll want to make sure that you're including recommendations for your structured task workflow. In terms of specifications, you definitely need to include target mapping design specifications. This would be a complete source to target specification down to the attribute level. You'll want to include an interface design specification as well as a data quality management specification. Moving into policies, you of course need to include draft policies within your deliverables. You'll want to include a configuration management policy. This just documents where your data migration resources will be stored so that they can be retrieved quickly and easily during execution phase. You'll want to include a recommended data migration policy and a security policy. So with the security policy, you really need to make sure you've got detailed resolutions to any security issues or data access issues that you identified during the assessment phase. And lastly, looking at draft agreements, you'll want to include service tool agreements as well as recommended third-party supplier agreements, or at least drafts thereof. Congratulations, we have covered each of the four phases of the STAR framework. So now what I recommend you do is go ahead and pull all of these together and start putting into place all of the pieces you need to produce a data migration strategy. Then show it to your boss. Look, even if they don't let you take the lead on the project or if they take all the credit, if you continue on like this, going the extra mile to use data and company resources to produce transformative business results, then one, you're going to build up a kick-ass CV that you can at least use to score a better job or you'll be recognized and promoted within your current company. Either way, that's a win-win for you. Now, if you want my 44 action item plan for building a data strategy plan for every data use case under the sun, then you're definitely going to want to check out my data strategy action plan. The data strategy action plan is a step-by-step -step checklist and Trello board planner for data professionals who want to get unstuck and up-leveled into their next promotion by building a fail-proof data strategy plan for their data projects. I'll put a link to it in the description below. Oh, and if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and leave a comment below letting me know when you think you'll get started on your data migration plan. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel so you'll be first to know when the next episode drops.